Good morning, this is Reverend Steve Ruber with 4U Ministries, and we have a bright sunny day here in North Carolina, April the 7th, uh, kind of chilly, kind of a high frost last night, and uh, um, but enjoy the cooler weather before we get into that uh, 90 degree weather that will be sure to come here. Uh, this morning's message title, Your Choice, The Narrow Gate or the Wide Gate? Uh, another subtitle we'll get to at the end, and uh, it might pay to have paper and pencil ready. I know um, if you're watching live, you can't pause me. Uh, and for, I guess you can turn me, always, my, me off. That's, that's your choice to uh, watch or not. And I'm very humbled by the uh, number of people who do view each week um, and the, those that comment. It does mean a lot to me. And uh, I'm, I'm honored that you make the choice to, uh, uh, to view this for as much as you watch. Uh, the, uh, the subtitle is Spirit Lifting Training. And some suggestions for uh, building one's spirit uh, to make that uh, a good choice. We make choices every day, almost every second. And uh, some of our choices are wise choices. Uh, some are not so wise. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I do something and I think, I know I shouldn't be doing this, like uh, using a small screwdriver and holding an object with small screws in my hand. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, this could slip and I could jab myself with the screwdriver, but that won't happen. No, it really hurt when I punctured my hand. <laughs> it really hurt. I thought, I knew better than to do that, but I still made the choice anyway to continue. Raise your hand if you've ever done anything stupid. Maybe not as stupid as that, but uh, you've kind of regretted, regretted things. So, you know, raise, raise that hand. Yeah, Hi, okay, I see some. Uh, a few deny that they've ever done anything stupid. But uh, this morning, the passage starts out with Matthew chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. From the King James Version, Therefore, all things, whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because the straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So this uh, includes the golden rule. In the King James, it's not quite as... Uh, is clear, um, you know it another way, but the Golden Rule, one of the most challenging scriptures there is, and it is an action verse. It is the way to life, a corollary of the greatest commandment. And the greatest commandment, is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That from Luke 10, 27 for the New International Version. It's easy to say, but it's difficult to do. If Jesus described the difficulty in the, in the next verses that come. He had said, you enter through the narrow gate, because that leads to life, and follow the broad path and find destruction. Now, people understood that in those days, and public roads were 16 cubits wide. A cubit is 18 inches, so two cubits would equal about a yard. So 16 cubits would be 8 yards, or 24 feet. That's as wide as my uh, driveway, and I'm able to park three cars diagonally on my driveway and back out just like it was in a parking lot. It is wide. And private roads were four cubits wide. That's two yards or six feet. So public roads were very wide, traveled by many, many people. The private roads traveled by few were very narrow comparatively. And the word gate to the Jews meant an entrance or an introduction or a means of acquiring anything. So there could be a gate of repentance, <clears throat> excuse me, or a gate of prayer, or a gate of tears. Remember, so gate meant an entrance, introduction, or a means of acquiring anything. So the narrow gate to life is determined by choices, as is the wide gate, the wide path. Now, God's people have been challenged with choices for, oh, ever since creation. Adam and Eve were given the choice of eating of all the fruit, all the trees of the garden, except for one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, they made a bad choice. 
Their decision had significant impacts on their lives for the future, their future, and for future generations. So one of our first choices is the choice of life or death. And Moses, uh, giving the words of God to the people, and if you can read these through Deuteronomy chapter 29 and chapter 30, reminding the people of what God had done for them. And in Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 19 from the King James Version, we read, See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou may livest and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that thou, both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Choices in that passage that God gave the people to obey him or not to obey him, to worship idols or not to worship idols, to receive blessing for obedience or to receive cursing for disobedience, to perish or to live long in the land. There are many, many choices there that, that the people had to make. The second choice we've read about the choice is, whom will you serve? And Joshua is saying to the people of Israel before they entered the promised land, from Joshua 24, 15, from the King James Version, very familiar verse to many people. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. Another choice there for the people. You know what you've done. You know the uh, worthlessness, meaninglessness of, of worshiping idols and the blessings from worshiping only God. Make your choice in the promised land. God had demanded the people of Israel worship only him. Again, they would be blessed. And all oh, many uh, blessings listed if they would obey. Oh, and many, many curses lifted it listed if they disobeyed his commands. And following up uh, Joshua 24, 21 to, to uh, 24, and the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. <laughs> Sounded like a pretty firm promise, right? You know, people had good intentions, and but their follow-through was poor. By their own choice, many turned to idolatry and were condemned. You ever have good intentions to do something, and then fail to do it, or you start doing it, and then you stop? Okay, we won't talk about New Year's resolutions. Um, but since I brought that up, how many are continuing in your New Year's resolutions as a choice to follow them or not? Oh, sorry about that. Don't turn me off. Uh, Jeremiah 21, verses 9 and 10 from the King James Version. Uh, it tells a follow-up of the uh, story of God giving Judah over to the Babylonians. He warned them again and again about their disobedience, and they would be... Uh, sent into exile. They would be uh, taken captive by the Babylonians, even by name. And uh, he told them, and when Nebuchadnezzar's uh, army besieged Jerusalem, God spoke to Jeremiah to tell the people. And we read it in Jeremiah 21, 9 and 10. He that abideth in this city, in Jerusalem, shall die by the sword, and by famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. For I have set my face against this city, Jerusalem, for evil and not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylonia, and shall burn it in with fire. 
So the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, gave people a choice. If you come out of the city, you'll live. I will let you live. If you stay in the city, you'll be destroyed with it. And the Babylonian king honored his promise to let the people who left Jerusalem live. God has given people choices through since the beginning of time, thousands of years. The golden rule, which is a narrow path, is the choice of doing. It's a positive command. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The opposite would be, and this is sometimes the, uh, the Pharisees rule, don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. And it's the, the negative action. Uh, the, the, the golden rule is a choice between action and inaction. It's, it's easy not to do something. <clears throat> we avoid things every day. Uh, I'm not going to go out and murder anyone today. Uh, I'm not going to go out and steal from anyone. Uh, <clears throat> so we don't murder, many of us. <laughs> we don't steal. Uh, although there's various definitions of stealing. Uh, it is income tax time. <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Uh, we may not hurt anybody. But the choice to do something for others, to do involves commitment. To do for another as you want them done for you involves love, forgiveness, and doing whatever is for another's well-being or peace. You don't often think about that. Is our choice when we do for others for their best, for their well-being, or is it a knee-jerk reaction to get revenge, you know, get even? Everyone chooses sin over good at times. Our evil nature is still present with us, even after renewal by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. He declares us righteous, and we are not righteous on our own. His death, which we um, reviewed last week, and then celebrate his resurrection. Jesus' death paid the penalty for our sins, and, and it was a horrible penalty to pay. In 1 John 1, verse 10, from the King James Version, If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. And in James 4, 17, from the King James Version, this is a catch-all. <laughs> if, if you think, ah, oh, I don't sin, you know, I, I'm, I live a pretty good life. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Oh, there's so much good that we don't do. And we know we should do. That is sin for us. You can confess it and be forgiven. It's our way to be declared righteous. As we cannot be righteous on our own, it's found in 1 John 1, 9, from the King James Version. You haven't heard this from me for a couple of weeks. You know, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That wipes our slate clean. Uh, in uh, preparing for this message, I came across uh, Dave Drape's uh, um, Weightlifting Principles. And I'm going to kind of just uh, summarize these. There's six principles. Set realistic goals as something that is possible for you to achieve. Um, then decide on a routine, something you can stick with. <laughs> Don't make it at an unreasonable hour uh, or uh, just an unreasonable time slot. Make it something that you can stick to. And then make a commitment to stick your routine for four to five weeks. Uh, it takes some time to develop a habit, and it's easy to give up. When you first start a routine, sometimes it can be difficult, and, and oh, I can't do this. Um, don't try too hard you know, too too soon. Uh, take it easy. Ease into it. Uh, Forward, determined to be positive and enthusiastic about the workout. <laughs> you know, sometimes doing it with someone else makes it a, a more positive experience, and, and both of you can, can encourage the other and, and be uh, enthusiastic. And again, Set, start with easy exercises, number five, and add difficulty as strength and endurance progress. If, if you want to start uh, walking, don't set out to walk uh, even three miles to start with if you haven't been. You know, start with uh, a few blocks, and then a mile, maybe, then maybe add every day uh, a little bit farther. You know, look down the street, okay, I'm going to make it to the, that big tree down there. I'm going to make it to the railroad tracks. I'm going to make it downtown. Little by little, add the strength because it's, you're not going to have strength for a, for a full strength, high endurance um, exercise program if you have not been doing it. Choose what you can be successful with, but then challenge yourself. Uh, don't get in a rut of just doing the easy stuff. 
And it'll start with easy exercises, develop strength, and that's drink water. <laughs> that, that's important when you exercise. And then six, be confident about reaching your goals, no matter the time. So you keep at it. Um, don't set an unrealistic goal, as I've said. If you want to uh, lose weight, make sure it's reasonable. Don't expect to lose 10 pounds in a week. Now, some programs say you can do that, but that's not the healthy way. And that many times the weight just comes right back on and sometimes even more. Oops, I didn't say that. <coughs> so <coughs> we have choices in our life. And uh, about exercise, doing things in a routine, something that would build up our body. But what about building up our spirit? Uh, because that is what helps us stay on the narrow path and go through the narrow gate. Uh, if we get lazy and do nothing, that, that's following the, the wide road. And, and many go through then the wide gate. But this is call it choices for spirit lifting training. Similar to the other, but one set a realistic goal for Bible reading and prayer. In Psalms 119 verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Any Bible reading can strengthen you and even what you choose that day and it's good to follow a devotional so you have a regular pattern uh you don't have to but have a, some pattern of reading through the bible and uh, uh some days that what you read will speak directly to a need you have but set a realistic goal if you're, if you're not used to reading for a long time set five minutes and then find a time to maybe read 10 minutes or sometimes you'll find that you've read a longer time uh, the more you read God's Word, uh, the more you understand, the more you see things to apply to your life, and the more you will remember the next time. And don't just sat be satisfied with reading through the Bible one time. Uh, make it a goal. Read through the Bible multiple times in, in different versions. You get different perspective. Number two, plan an orderly and thorough routine to train your brain and, and your mind in godliness. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, have an orderly and thorough routine, even a notebook to take notes. Or if you have a, some Bibles have a wide margin now for journaling. Uh, journal your thoughts, your, your questions, things to follow up on, the things that stand out to you. Uh, for, for a long time, I, I used a notebook as I read. And, well, I filled up a notebook with, with many ideas or, or verses. Uh, number three, you make a commitment to stick with the plan. As in uh, Dave Drape's plan, four to five weeks, <laughs> set any time. Um, you'll begin to see changes and benefits and develop character and perseverance. Again, stick with it, but don't knock yourself if you, if you miss a day or two or three. Start in again. That's all it takes. You know, God knows your heart. He understands. And you'll begin to see differences and perspectives. You'll find more things to study. Something will capture your attention and to, to further study, word studies. Or use a, a, a Bible study guide that can help you to, to, to uh, write down the answers or to uh, further understand or further study. And then uh, see Romans 5, verses 3 and 4. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulations work with patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. So as you read and study, you'll, you'll see changes in, in yourself, or be challenged to make changes. Fourth thing, enthusiasm for God's Word must be developed as a main and driving force to be successful. So be enthusiastic. Now, some parts of Scripture are difficult to go through. You know, in your first reading, it's okay to skip over some of those, skip over some of the genealogies if, if you want. Those can be hard. Or some of the things in uh, uh, Leviticus can, can be difficult to work through. Don't give up because of that. You can set that aside and go to it another time or little by little. Uh, I always tell people it's easy to start with First John and then uh, read John. John, the Gospel of John describes who Jesus is and Read the other Gospels. There'll be similar stories, but some in addition. Read the letters. There's many challenges. And write down uh, things that, that you read that you feel, oh, I need to be doing that. And uh, yeah, just keep going. Philippians 4, 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, 
with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Five, ease into your spirit building program with a wholesome, thoughtful spirit building plan. Avoid the traps of temptation which, uh, in which you often fall. Avoid gossip. Be careful what you look at, listen to, and participate in. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. If you know you're involved in things that would be against God's will, stop it. You know, turn to the Bible. If you have temptation, read the Bible. Turn away from it. Look at what is good in spirit, spirit lifting. Um, number Second uh, Timothy two sixteen. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. James four seven and eight. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know. So fill your mind with God's word, and that's a battle against Satan. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You know, it's, it's an effort. We have that evil nature within us that is battling for control of our mind. Even when we have Christ in us, the Holy Spirit, listen to the Holy Spirit. Develop that character. Develop the habits of, of asking and praying and spending time in the Word. Fit it into your schedule. You know, even when you're working and have children, I know it's tough. Little by little, that anything and God can take your little and make it into much you know one scripture verse you read and post on your refrigerator that can make a change in your life six be confident from the game the application of these sound principles will produce the desired results uh, Philippians 1 6 being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work and you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ so as you read the Bible, be confident. God's going to speak to you through his word. He does. The Holy Spirit will move in your heart, your mind, to remind you of things that you've read or to instruct you or to, you know, maybe chasten you about things. And so keep that up to build your, your spirit. Uh, choose this day you what you will do to follow the narrow path and that leads to the narrow gate. Avoid choosing a wide path and because it looks easier more tempting or more satisfying or more fun and the narrow path is the most beautiful filled with more blessings more adventurous and more satisfying and leads to the most joy so make your choices widely wisely the narrow way through the narrow gate or the wide path through the wide gate Heavenly Father I want to follow the narrow path that leads through the gate into your kingdom forgive my taking the wrong path at times Bring me back to the path I desire. Help me stay focused on the way to blessings from you. I trust in your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for making the choice to view today. Have a great day and a great weekend. And make wise choices.